Hello and welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Point. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the blind playthrough of Legendary Difficulty. The good old first playthrough of what appears to be one of the longest tactical games that I've ever played. Maybe it's just me or maybe this game has a morbid sense of humor when it comes to pacing. Um, uh, it is episode 122 and I am struggling to see an end but hopefully that will soon uh, be the case. Seeking Dr. Symes is the next mission. We're here with our A-team. You know the drill by now if you have actually made it all the way. You would know that we have a kick-ass team. So what I did is number one I spent 150 uh, Phoenix points and mostly upgrading speed and willpower. You can see the soldiers are almost maximum on all of uh, them. I've mainly focused on speed uh, to make it more serviceable. Because I noticed if you can move uh, fast from A to B, you have more actions left over for everything else. And there is a lot of movement in the maps necessary. So I would argue con uh, counterintuitive at the beginning, maybe strength is the most important skill to get a certain amount of hit points. Um, willpower is then becoming important to at least be able to have like two rotations of your main skills. But uh, in terms of then just uh, towards the end game skill uh, speed by far seems to be the most important skill just to get uh, fast from A to B. You can also see we have the scorpions uh, which is the ancient tech sniper rifle as well as the virophage uh, phage, uh, kit which is the better version of the normal mat kit uh, which heals more and is also cooler in every regard. Uh, we got Dilly G and Euler with the good new toys. And I think I put one more toy in here. Uh, where was it? Oh yeah, here. Uh, JP Pauly has the Phoenix laser array. I wanted to test that and see how it works. I can't put it into a weapon slot, so you only have it on your body. What that means we'll figure out, I suppose. But it has three shots and is ultra, ultra accurate. Anyways, with the exception of uh, JP, I think everybody else is now at 20 speed, as you can see, thanks to the extra points, I would say. So let's jump right into it and kick some alien butt. And look at that. We find ourselves yet again in a situation where we need to uh, get evidence. Well, that will be easy. Well, this is going to be one of those that completely showcases how broken the Scyther is. We're charging up. And let's use our friendly support. Where is he? There we go, Jarenks. Best support in the world. Dashes as well. And whilst we're on it, let's continue to dash over here. Which then brings us to a nice dash over here. Ian is just the fastest. There we go. We're going to use rapid clearance. You ask yourself why? The answer is because we can. And now we're finally seeing all of the hidden enemies. Skyther. Tell you what, we're actually moving up a little bit more. Oh, there we go. Finally. Well. Good. That worked well. Mm 
We're activating the object. Oh yeah, we're moving up. Got a nice kill right there. Continuing to move up. Oh, this is going to be fun. That. And... Um, yeah, a little bit of that. Moving up. I would like a bit more of... Tell you what. Let's see if we can actually pull this off. One. Two. Moves a little bit. Switch. Regains actions. Moves a little bit. Regains actions. Very good. That worked like a charm. And one, and two, he's already scared. Jump, move, and I think this should be it. And we even get one of them as a captive. Apparently we've missed. At least a single unit. Not sure where. This boy boy have we just killed everyone. But maybe it's just a matter of ending the turn. Yeah, and that's the advantage of just being overall fast. Everybody can move half of uh, half of the map without needing to slow down. Good. End of turn. No way. There are still enemies. How? All right. One. Nope, can't see anything. Polly moves up. This is strange. Oh, okay. Good, well. Shattered Realm begins to move up. And this guy, unfortunately, 
requires us to change tactics a little bit because elsewise if we're not paralyzing him that will mean he's respawning and I don't want that to happen Giri G moves up onslaught and yeah we're Going to paralyze him. Okay, good. That worked out well. Drinks moves up. Nothing. I find that highly suspicious. Normally you would at least spot enemies but not this time all right Euler supports the other side okay well I wonder where he's coming from, or was coming from. Hmm, strange. Ranks. No, 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 no. That's the right uh, thing to do. Oil moves over. Strange. Should have maybe healed, but okay. Doesn't matter now. That was unfortunate. Somehow we missed three enemies. But equally, all three of them can now be uh, used to create mutagens. Yeah, look, overall, that was fine. We got something uh, good out of it. Plus, we do have containment. Yes, please. Just refilling our mutagen store. Good, we're moving on to the next mission which is uh, likely the last one that we do have available at the moment. Okay, so... Hmm. Everything else seems to be in order. Research labs are being built, so that's fine, which will help the research to go a little bit faster. Maybe I should be more careful with slowing down the time, but yet again, I learned my lesson. Missed important events just way too often.
Good, that is not it. No, no. Where else? West Africa. Mist Haven, no. Alaska, no. Newfoundland, no. Europe, no. Born in the USA, no. South America, no. No. Uh, India, Schmindia, I think. That's a good place. There you go. Not yet. Let's wait for the rest of the team. That is a fantastic trade. Let's move on. Good, I think now we got everybody here. Ian needs some healing, but we can do that right away. It's not a big deal. And let's deploy. All right, we got yet another. Oh, it looks very much like the map that we have played before in. Let's get frenzied and excited. Some more healing, now we're fine. Let's charge and see what we're going to find. Oh, we already found a few enemies, which is good. Well, I would say here we go then. It's officially on. Oh yeah, it's on. All right, continue to move up. So let's see, could we get this this guy down? Maybe. We'll we'll try it. Uh potentially. Difficult because I don't know where the rest is going to be. Let's shortly get some backup, shall we? So, dash for the ranks. Into another dash from the ranks. Yeah, let's not create too much of a hassle. Yes, he will be regener uh, reanimating, but not being able to get him is not the end of the world. Move 
What's up? That's a kill. Okay, we need to find where uh, find out where the rest is located. Rel typically has really good perception, so might as well use that to our advantage. Okay, haven't found anything there. Polly moves up. Nothing. Euler moves up, nothing. Billy G moves up. Well, maybe it's really just a reanimation which is going to happen. Maybe not. Uh, can't reach him. Seems to be panic though, <clears throat> so we can move up. We can move up. Okay, cool. Well, inappropriate Murphy just moves. And Shepherd Realm <coughs> moves on to the other side of the map as well. And that's the end. Here's the leg. We hand over an extraction. Full heal. See how little damage that crossbow is actually dealing. Surprising. Hundred and seventy PDW in comparison. Much much stronger. Alright, Shattered Realm moves up. Let's see. One, two. Let's 
Hmm. Well, it seems we have no other option but to actually kill this guy. That's unfortunate. At least this one. Very good. Surprisingly easy mission. All right, so what they died for exploration side we got quite a bit of tech and material <clears throat> but we also got new research available so what exactly do we have virophage weapons it would be possible to adapt the weakened highly modified form of the antediluvian virophage into weapons for our operatives uh, sounds awesome let's prioritize that and uh, Yugomithian entity telepathic uh, nodule suggests possibility that whatever created the Pandoran virus is controlling the Pandorans directly. Okay, cool. Yeah, sounds like yet another storyline mission. Cool. Well, we got an active Pandoran structure. How about? Helios 5 is starting to move there and whilst we're at it Helios 6 certainly could move there as well next objectives we got to finish both of these research uh, researches Continuing to trade. So yeah, our resources are actually looking absolutely fine. The only thing that is missing is a clear path forward other than continuing to research over and over. That's a bit annoying is the wrong word. Uh, it just makes me skeptical as in why it takes so long to just get to the end of the research. I've really put a lot of research labs up. Research complete. So we got the stim pack, potent uh, stimulant that instills frenzy. Oh, interesting. Okay. Cool, that seems to be kind of a, a self-application, I guess. Not bad for uh, the priests that uh, typically don't get a lot of frenzy. Now, again, I'm wondering in terms of bases, India Schmintia uh, is has, uh, the energy generator. How long would it take to get the research lab because it seems that research is really the one aspect that is just dragging the campaign out. Two more research labs. Good. Well, I tell you what. Four days. We're just going to build four research labs. I'm not going to mess around anymore. This year already looks like a little bit more than four days. And we also got that advanced technology. And who says that after just getting the virophage weapons and so on, 
that were actually that were actually done. A Stimpak is an interesting device. I like it. It's not bad. And the other uh, thing that I was wondering is this here creates how much paralysis? 16. 8 uh, paralysis from uh, from the melee version. This you could dish out 32 paralysis on a sniper. And it would fill a role that we haven't had yet, which is the uh, really ranged base uh, paralysis. 16 isn't bad. I mean, the pistol is better in terms of just speed of injecting paralysis, but this isn't uh, bad at all because we could get someone down relatively speaking fast. So I wonder if we should get a few of these. The other option, just thinking out loud, uh, the other option of course would be to get uh, two further Heliuses and just put another team into the Heliuses instead of Tiamat's. Hmm. I think we're okay. I. Really, I don't uh, see a lot of a lot of need for anything in particular. Our primary team is just jet setting through the world. Whilst we're trying to trade uh, for resources. Good, so next up we'll get more research labs and then we should actually be fine. Yeah, almost got enough for another sniper rifle. Good. Destiny 3 is completed, which yet again we can take on the Prime team. Uh, we just came from here, so... I think we want to turn counterclockwise. We're almost done with another set of uh, of uh, these ancient resources. Once we get them, we should be fine. Yeah, that's again one of those crew cavens. Cool. So we can finally build the last sniper. I'm wondering in terms of personnel. Let's just double check what else we would need. So as I was saying, um, we got the PDWs. 
There is really nothing to upgrade them. Got the destiny lasers, that's fine as well. Good melee weapon, good grenade launcher. That's really easy. Murphy. Um, I think we wanted to give him the Destiny Rocket Launcher. Where is the Rocket Launcher? Um... Gosh, am I missing it? I was pretty sure we have built one. But I can only see the energy array. Not the actual launcher. Alright, never mind. We'll get it eventually. Nothing here for Grell uh, to upgrade. She already has everything. Hmm. You know what? For Grell, one of the things that we could do is we could give her the sniper. Basically for adrenaline rush and hitting from uh, from a ranged position. But she also has Maddox of the Ancient, so is she really needing the sniper? That's a big question mark. Shattered Realm is fine, the heavy, Phoenix, uh, the heavy Phoenix Cannon isn't bad either. Yeah, and Jarenx, I mean, we don't really need a Scorpion anymore. She could get handgun proficiency, which she does not need. Instead, we gave her uh, sniper rifle proficiencies, a little bit more strength, but it seems she's still overloaded. So the question is, something has to give. What are we going to leave behind? Maybe the neuralizer. Having the machine gun isn't bad either. It's a fantastic weapon, but yeah, we have too many fantastic weapons. <laughs> Can't have it all. Uh, with the sniper, she could dish out a lot of, uh, really a lot of damage. But so she could uh, do the same with the Dangef uh, MG. Yeah, we got we literally got everything. Is there any other weapon that we haven't gotten yet? Something with from the ancients. We got the crystal crossbow. That's okay. Not great, but okay. Scyther, we have two of them. Could build a third one, but it's not necessarily needed. Scorpion, we got quite a few of these and one more in production. Unless we're equipping the next teams, I don't necessarily see a lot that we could uh, use. The flamethrower isn't bad. I will give it, uh, give that uh, to him. And the shredding shotgun isn't bad either, just for pure shredding. So building another one of these, not bad, I like it. We have never tried uh, the actual shotgun shotgun. Uh, the effective range here is 13. What is Herora's range? 
10. Well, it's not bad. I, it's actually a little bit better range than I was anticipating. But yeah, we could build two short guns uh, just for our snipers, I suppose. So instead of that, let's build a short gun. And the Scyther costs how much? Because I think we could use one more of uh, these awesome weapons. Oh, it also uh, costs the green material. So yeah, that's a no-no. Anything that we could get for just the yellow one would be the Maddox of the Ancient. And that's potentially about it. Yeah, let's get one of these guys as well. Okay, and depending on how it works, maybe we're getting another uh, another shotgun because thought process is we have everything. Next natural weapon that I would exchange is the assault rifle. Uh, those uh, have 32 effective range. Okay, got you. They fulfill a specific purpose. But if we can replace them with no ammunition shotgun weapons, yeah, I think that's the right uh, call. Same deal here. Maybe not. I mean, the PDW is actually fantastic damage. Really, really good damage. But for Jarenks, as an example, he has shotguns as a training. Could exchange uh, the Madrox Fist and give him a shotgun as well. Because the last time that we had the Crystal Crossbow, uh, he couldn't even get uh, one of those respawned guys down by himself. And that isn't meeting expectation. So we need a little bit uh, more oomph. Cool. Let's move on. A little bit faster. Good. A lot of trading is happening as always. Good, lots and lots and lots of trading is happening here. Nope, uh, that was a crew caven. And even more trading. Gosh, I mentioned it 500 times, but the trading aspect of this game so absolutely poorly designed. The longer that I play it, the more it starts to annoy me. Simply because I don't see what the point behind it is. Why would you design it that way? Thank <laughs> you. 
construction complete. Good, we got more research labs coming in. That is well needed and well anticipated. Thank you for that. Research complete. Good, we got some more uh, virus sniper rifles. So that's a single shot um, 10 ammo capacity. 110 damage plus 80 virus damage. No, that's not bad. I mean, it's okay. Not as good as the ancient uh, rifle, but it is fine. Comparing it really quickly. So that's 190 effective damage. Eh, slightly more, but this uh, has no ammunition. And virus typically isn't as great. Yes, it stacks up, but mm, not yet fully convinced. All right, more trading, way more trading. Okay, how about we're continuing here? Gosh, damn it, that whole trading. Fantastic, good. Let's keep it rolling. According to the sheer deluge of new Jericho spam we've received over our comms, Tobias West has finished building his new and impressive command fortress. Now, it may not be Sinidrin's. West claims to value freedom above all else. Good. For no particular ever... reason other than they don't like one another, uh, they start to hate each other. Okay, well, that sucks. Sorry to hear that you don't like one another, but I can't really do much about that. Kind of getting the sense that this whole diplomacy between the three uh, is set up to at some point explo uh, explode. I have not seen a single option so far to de-escalate it. Tobia, Tobias West's fortress is under construction. What does that even mean? Good, we're starting with two Helios. Okay, 
Very good. Well, I really don't know what to say. We're still not really making progress, and I somehow fail to understand uh, why that is. Keep researching, but it, it just feels very, very, very slow. Okay, so flying. We got all of these, yeah, basically flying up there. For twelve, now nah, we have enough. Uh, we have enough food. There we go. We need to trade out of food. Gosh, look at how many different alien uh, nests we had just over here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On that screen alone, we killed ten different nests. Good, gotta be careful with the terms of trade. We don't want to go too deep into food. Yeah, we have enough food. That's really not needed at this point. Good. Our analysis of the antediluvian texts, combined with the knowledge gathered of Phoenix Point over the course of the last century, has forced us to acknowledge a shocking truth. The war against the Earth uh, is being waged by an alien entity. Its being unimaginable age and its power is located on Yugoth, the ninth planet in our solar system. Yugoth's orbit is highly elliptical, coming close to Earth every 17,000 years. When it does, Yugoth expels meteorites carrying various uh, iterations of the Pandora virus, a bioweapon intended to radically transform Earth ecosystem to the advantage of the Yugothian entity. The entity communicates with the creatures via some form of quasi-telepathic signal. Evidence suggests that the human beings are sensitive to the transmissions explaining the occurrence of the name Yugoth and variations thereof in the work of artists such as Lovecraft uh, and so on and so forth. We have concluded that uh, ultimate purpose of the entity is to create an ecological condition that will allow it to come to Earth and have hypothesized uh, the existence of Yugothian's receptacles, a clone or replica in which the entity will transform its consciousness. We believe that the Pandorians are already in the process of accumulating biomass and genetic material for that purpose. Finally, we knew our enemy. The Pandora virus was only a tool. It was the hand that wielded it that truly mattered. The creature we came to call the Yugothian entity. It was old perhaps older than the solar system itself. On Yugoth, the ninth planet, 
it lay waiting. For thousands of years, it slept in the outer darkness. But when Yugoth's orbit approached the Earth, it expelled the seeds of our destruction. Its mind reached out, haunting our dreams, infesting our stories. Its ultimate purpose was to transform our world into its own, to recreate whatever long-lost abyss it had come from. Its creatures were already assembling a new body it could inhabit. And when they were done, when the Ugothian entity came to Earth, nothing could stand in its way. The old world is gone, and yet it haunts us. There are those who dream of taking us back to those dark days before the Flood, when greed ruled and change seemed impossible. Sins and lies are difficult to kill, but kill them we shall. With the blessing of the dead god, new Jericho will fall and the faithful will rejoice. Okay, finally we have revealed the true enemy behind the Pandora virus. For New Jericho, this is excellent news, finally a proper war with clean sites, and we know which uh, they are on. There's no more time for traitors and accommodationists. For Sanadrian, it's a question of philosophy. They do want to seize the master's tool and transform the world, or destroy the uh, cosmic hierarchy and let things take their own course. The answer will have to be reached democratically. Everybody hates us even more. That is absolute utter shite. Why is the game treating us like that? Why am I researching something and then afterwards everybody hates us? Okay, so we have a couple of options here, right? Uh, for Tobias West's plan to save humanity to work, he aims to organize production and deployment of a global scale with far greater efficiency. A centralized AI mean, uh, is the means to achieve that. All base facility outputs are increased by 50%. Okay. We need to analyze the evidence to find out more about the Yugothian um, and uh, receptacles and its purpose. And we got the moon mission preparation, inspired by the theorists regarding the Yugothian entity. A Sanhedrin science team has come up with an incredible proposal to send a probe to the moon, looking for evidence of previous attacks uh, on our planet. Uh, that would increase the aircraft speed quite dramat uh, dramatically. I like it, I like that, and I like that. Unfortunately, as so often, just way too much to research. Good, we're slowly but surely trading. Um, nope, that's Crew Caven again, still falling for it. Mandicore 3. Um, let's see, Mandicore 1 and 3 were together, so 3 is actually in Africa. Do they have enough stuff to trade? I think yes. 
But before we go there, no, actually right now, we can uh, start to kill the Pandoran Lair, but that will happen in the next episode because we once again need to remove the threat. Um, before completing the research, there's a lot of centralized research. Then Command Fortress needs to be uh, needs to be uh, cleared out. It seems we're again just having a lot of research. It's crazy if you think about it. And oh boy, West Africa. Look, we're okay from a storage perspective. Don't need more at the moment. One, two, three, four. Can't believe that I'm uh, that I'm forced to do that. It's four more research labs, so we're looking at like eight more research facilities. How is this game? calculating how endgame is supposed to look like i mean maybe it is calculating it exactly how it is supposed to look like but am i the only one who thinks this is a bit crazy good got a scyther We need ex additional shard guns is the question. We had one. I think we wanted the second one. Good, after these are done. Model of the Ancients. Good, we got a pretty equal amount of resources. Scythers uh, is another option. Yeah, we don't really need anything in the classical sense. It's just there are opportunities to equip the rest of uh, the teams, I suppose. Heliuses can still be built. We have plenty of resources elsewise. And yeah, next time we're going to invade the Pandoran Lair and continue our long uh, stony road to finish this game. After about 150 hours worth of gameplay, maybe even more, I finally get a glance of what needs to be done in order to finish the game. But I have absolutely no idea how long this is out, uh, out there. The pacing of the game seems completely off and maybe it is me researching the wrong things but uh, typically you get kind of a sense what you need to do next here it's just crazy completely um completely different you you don't know what to research well you sort of know from the objectives but sometimes this here isn't really telling you um, telling you a lot and the rewards are quite mediocre to be precise and then you have like 50 different weapons that you can research uh, search the whole uh, ancient technology that took us a lot of time so yeah i'm not complaining it's just i think for a first time i might have just m misunderstood the order and the game wasn't really telling you exactly what uh, what it is expecting you to do anyways um next up we're going to get down that little layer here and then we're continuing to grind material. Thanks for watching guys. If you want to grind something, grind uh, the like button and see you in episode 123. Bye bye.